Welcome to another Q&A video. If you would like to participate in the next one and ask me something, please follow me on Twitter because that's where I always ask for questions. All right, let's get started. Favorite show right now, I'm watching Degrassi, the newest season, and actually I just finished it. So, oh my god, I'm waiting for the next one. What a cliffhanger. Man, I love that show, it's so addicting. <laughs> Is anyone else watching it? I feel like I'm the only person that watches that show anymore, but I love it. Are you going to do Vlogmas this year? Yes, I'm going to try if something happens and I miss a couple days. You know, I'll just, whatever, I'll keep going for as long as I can. But yeah, I will be doing Vlogmas, so look forward to that. Alexandra asks, what's one food item or dish you've never had that you're dying to try but haven't yet from any culture? Okay, I don't know if this counts, but I really love Indian curry. Well, the Indian curry that I've had in like Japan and Canada, and I would really like to go to India and try the real thing because you never really know if the version that you're eating in a foreign country is actually like the actual recipe. So yeah, I would love to go to India and try real Indian curry. Freaking delicious. What's the sakura season like in Tokyo around mid-April? I'm going with friends on spring break. It changes every year. I can't tell you exactly how the sakura will look next year during mid-April. Sometimes they bloom in March, sometimes they bloom in May. Um, I would say that April is probably your best bet for being able to see the sakura, but it's such a short window. It's like a week, sometimes two weeks where they look nice. Uh, worst case scenario, they'll only be around for a day and a storm the following day will destroy all of them. It's so short and it changes every year, so kind of can't predict it, sorry. What do you feel most proud of? Hmm, <laughs> that's a hard one. I have lots of things that I'm proud of. Probably, probably I guess the biggest thing that I've been working on for a long time that I'm proud of are my channels. I put a lot of energy into making videos and yeah, I'm pretty proud that I've stuck through it <laughs> all these five years. There have been lots of ups and downs, especially recently with the way YouTube is kind of messing with everybody and every time we upload videos we lose several hundred subscribers and it's randomly unsubscribing people that want to be subscribed to our channels not sharing our videos properly. It's just been a complete mess, but but myself and my friends are going to try and stick through it. So, yeah, I don't know. YouTube's been like a roller coaster and I'm proud of myself for sticking through it and making my channels as successful as they are. So, I really have you guys to thank for that. So, thank you so much for always coming to watch my videos no matter what they're about. I make some pretty random videos and you guys are always around to leave nice comments for me and thumb them up and that makes that makes me so happy, so thank you so much. What is something you have learned about yourself while living in Japan? I guess I've learned lots of things about myself. Well, <laughs> I've lived here for 10 years, which is like my entire adult life, so it's kind of hard to attribute any of the things I've learned to living in Japan. It's probably more of just like, you know, <laughs> a byproduct of growing up. But I've learned that I really like to have my house organized and it's really stressful when it's not. I've been so busy recently that I haven't been able to keep my house in order recently as in like the past few years and it's totally stressing me out because I love having a clean house and just recently I've gone on like a basket and jar buying spree and I've been trying to organize everything a little bit at a time and once it's all done I'm finally gonna do that house tour that I've been promising for like half a year now. But yeah, I've definitely learned that I like to keep my stuff organized. I finally have my own big, big house to myself now. So yeah, that's like a new experience for me. I've only lived in tiny apartments up until now. So that's been fun. Um, I've also learned that I really like exploring by myself on my bicycle or walking. I didn't do too much of that in Canada just because I was kind of scared to go out by myself, especially at nighttime. I had some bad experiences uh, in Canada that made me worry to be by myself. 
but in Japan I feel a lot safer so I do a lot of exploring on my bicycle just kind of riding around uh, my area trying to find like new fun spots and it's been really fun exploring new areas. That's one thing that I like about moving. You have no idea what the surrounding area of your house is like and you can kind of go exploring and finding special spots like shrines. Like in Japan, it's really cool because you can find like secret little shrines and cool stuff like that, which I really like. Those are two things that I can think of off the top of my head, but there's many more. <laughs> is the extra sleep sleepy time tea any good? I'm trying to discover some new tea, so any recommendations? Yes, I really love the sleepy time tea. I've been drinking it every night before I go to bed and it definitely makes me sleepier. It does have that valerian root in it, which uh, is known to be like a natural sleep aid and it really does help. I can feel myself starting to get sleepy as soon as I finish drinking it. So I really recommend that one if you're trying to make yourself sleepy. Other than that, I'm obsessed with the Tazo Chai. I probably will be forever. <laughs> really love it. I also really like the stash red velvet tea oh my god or it's like red velvet cupcake i can't remember what it's called but holy crap i will try to find links to all these for you guys so you can see exactly which ones i'm talking about but freaking delicious Alyssa asked me a really good question and it's actually one that I wanted to make a full video about but I don't know if I'll ever get around to it so I'll answer this now with just what comes off the top of my head. What would you tell your teenage self? Any advice? Um, I would definitely say to stop worrying so much about what other people think and don't get embarrassed when they make fun of you for things that you like that aren't cool or you know and yeah be yourself and don't try to impress people because you don't need those people in your life if they're not going to accept you for who you really are anyways that's definitely probably the biggest piece of advice that i would give my teenage self and any of you guys out there that are feeling like you don't really fit in at school and people don't like the things you like and it's hard to make friends don't worry about it because when you get to university it gets a lot easier people are a lot cooler <laughs> it's just a lot easier to make friends so yeah that would be my biggest piece of advice <laughs> What's one selfish request you'd ask your subscribers to do for you? Spill the beans. <laughs> That's a funny question. I would... I would ask you guys to... I feel really bad asking this. It is like super selfish. <laughs> and honestly, I feel really bad like mentioning stuff like this, which is why I don't um, very often. Most YouTubers do, and I should probably just do it because I can see that it's affecting their channels in positive ways. But I would ask you guys to thumb up my videos more because it really helps with how they appear on the YouTube platform. They'll show up more in recommendations and they'll show up properly in subscription boxes, etc. So it helps my videos get a steady amount of views so I can continue supporting myself enough to continue this channel full-time So yeah, that would be my one selfish request, but you do not have to do it <laughs> I'm just saying if there was something that I wanted that would probably be it Maggie asks what's your childhood dream? God, I can't remember Really the only one goal that I ever had that I can vividly remember was wanting to live in Japan So I guess I made it happen. So that's cool um, And I always wanted to have like a farm with lots of cats So that'll be my future goal to work towards Oh, this is a nice one. How has your life changed since leaving the big city? They're referring to how I used to live right in Tokyo and I moved to the countryside. I really like it. it. I feel so much more relaxed. I don't need to take the crowded trains constantly. I do go into Tokyo a lot for work recently, so honestly it kind of still feels like I live there sometimes. <laughs> I've been doing lots of traveling and it kind of sucks because I get car sick really easily. But, um, yeah, not living in Tokyo is wonderful. I do not regret my decision whatsoever. The area that I live in is so beautiful and I'm having so much fun riding my bike around, exploring it. And, yeah, just having so few people around is definitely the kind of environment that I enjoy. I'm not a big city girl. My hometown is pretty small. <laughs> so I think I really appreciate places that are similar to my hometown. It's kind of just what I'm comfortable with. Um, so yeah, I'm loving it. Really, really loving it. Any advice for people traveling in Japan with food allergies? 
Uh, yes, I would definitely take a little notepad or your smartphone and make a little list of all the things you're allergic to and then give it to a Japanese person that speaks English to help you make a very precise explanation of stuff you can't eat. And then you'll have that little note with you all the time and when you go to a restaurant or say a store and you need to show it to someone, um, you'll have that with you. And yeah, I think that's really the best thing you can do, especially if you don't speak any Japanese. Even if you do speak Japanese, it's nice to have it in written form so that you know that they're really reading it exactly how it's written and they're not going to make any mistakes with your order. I've had some friends before that ordered that specifically said they were allergic to something and then I don't know if they just didn't hear them properly but when we got our order there were like nuts all over their dish and they can't eat nuts so you really need to be careful and I would say make sure that you say it several times when you're talking to them that you can't have this it's very serious. Even if it's not super serious it's better to just say that it is so that they really know that they shouldn't put it in the dish. Alright guys, I feel like this video is way longer than I expected it to be. <laughs> Thanks for watching and again if you want to participate in the next Q&A just follow me on Twitter. I ask for questions there every once in a while. Thanks for watching guys. Bye!